Our core lock has never been this good. This season, thanks to the artifact mods, the synergy with this build is completely off the charts. And in my eyes, this is one of the strongest builds out there. Infinite arc explosions that blind enemies, infinite grenades that jolt enemies and cause chain lightning, constant 30% damage resist, infinite rifts providing constant healing, and much, much more. What makes this build really stand out beyond others is that with just one weapon, we cover every single champion type, making it one of the best solo builds out there this season. That can help you not only solo the dungeon, but also take on Legend, Master Lost Sectors, and even Nightfalls. Dim link for the build will be in my Discord, link for which will be in the comments or the description below. At the heart of this build are the exotic Warlock gloves, the Getaway Art which are actually the best exotic for Arc Warlocks. Why? Because they instantly give you amplification, which provides an absolutely ridiculous number of benefits that are slept on. When you consume your Arc Grenade, you instantly get amplified with Getaway Artists. Now, Amplified provides a whole host of benefits to mobility, slide distance, sprint speed, but this season it's taken to a whole new level thanks to the artifact mods. With electric armor, when you're amplified, you gain 30% damage resist and you can keep amplified up forever, so you constantly have this damage resistance. With shock and awe, we can bring down bursts of lightning with any arc kill, causing AoE explosions. With amped up, the duration of these benefits is also maxed out to 20 seconds. And with lightning strikes twice, when we use our grenade, we get an increased grenade regeneration rate, which is extended each time we get an arc final blow, so you can keep this buff up constantly. But what really takes this build to S tier levels is its synergy with the exotic auto rifle centrifuge, and specifically with its catalyst, which lets the weapon become overcharged automatically when you're amplified. And in this build, trust me, you have 100% uptime with Amplified. Typically with Centrifuge, you have to run around to become overcharged, but now you can actually stand still and become overcharged. Remember, at higher levels of overcharge, Centrifuge is going to cause lightning explosions itself and blind enemies as well, on top of gaining more range and more reload speed. And because you're always generating overcharge, it's no longer as punishing to actually reload the weapon manually and lose overcharge charge because in a second or two it's back to near maximum charge again. It's a complete game changer in my eyes for this weapon. So there's two grenade types I highly recommend with this build. The first flashbang grenade and hear me out, I know not a lot of you have used flashbang grenade in PvE but it has the lowest cooldown timer of all the art grenades meaning you can consume it more often via getaway artists. It's also a great grenade in itself because it blinds enemies meaning we can use it to stun unstoppable champions. And with the fragment spark of shock we also jolt our enemies with the grenade which stuns overload champions and it's anti-barrier auto rifle this season so with one grenade and one weapon we cover all three champion types for content that doesn't need champion coverage i'd switch to pulse grenade which generates tons of ionic traces which are these little traces of arc energy which track back to you and give you ability energy not to mention pulse grenades are just great in general for their overall damage and taking out stronger enemies we haven't even touched on the fact that when you use getaway artists to consume your grenade you get a sentient arc soul which is basically a juiced up version of regular arc soul, which now fires a burst of five shots each time instead of the regular three. Now this little thing can take out enemies by itself very effectively, and it even synergizes with shock and awe to create explosions as well. You can practically keep refreshing this thing infinitely using your rift as well. Remember, use your getaway artist first to consume your grenade to get 20 seconds of sentient arc soul before using your rift to refresh the buff whenever you step inside. If you use a rift before using your getaway artist, you'll get a regular arc soul which isn't as strong, and then even consuming your grenade with getaway artist will just extend the timer of that regular arc soul. Once you get this gameplay loop down, you can keep your sentient arc soul and amplification buff and you can actually use your grenade offensively when required because you no longer need to keep consuming it. Your rift will refresh the buff. 
Remember, regular arc kills will also refresh your amplification timer. Let's cover the rest of the arc build, and trust me, you'll want to watch this because there's still so much left to cover here. For our super, we use Chaos Reach, which is a brilliant burst super for taking out tankier enemies or even for boss damage. For our class ability, you want Healing Rift so you have a reliable way of healing yourself on demand, and trust me, even with a low recovery stat, you'll be getting your rift back super fast. Then Burst Glide, Chain Lightning, and as discussed before, Flashbang or Pulse Grenade. Now for our aspects, our first aspect is actually going to be Arc Soul. Now with Getaway Artists, you don't have to have Arc Soul as an aspect, but what a lot of people don't know is that a regular Arc Soul obtained from Rift with Amplified fires five burst shots as well and basically functions like a sentient arc soul anyways. So running this aspect means that if you do mess up your gameplay loop and accidentally use rift first, it doesn't actually matter too much because this is one of the few builds out there that has 100% uptime on amplified. The second aspect you absolutely want is electrostatic mind, which is going to generate ionic traces by defeating targets with either arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets, which a lot of our enemies are going to be. Ionic Traces gives all of your abilities a chunk of their energy back. For Fragments, I went for Spark of Discharge so our Centrifuge kills can generate Ionic Traces, Spark of Resistance to provide even more damage resistance on top of the 30% we already have, Spark of Ions whereby defeating Jolted Targets creates an Ionic Trace and this stacks with Electrostatic Mind where defeating a Jolted Target will now create two Traces instead of one. And then finally Spark of Shock so that our Arc Grenades can Jolt enemies which not only improves Chain Lightning but also helps with Champions. For armor mods on your helmet the most important mod to run is Arc Siphon which creates orbs of power when you defeat enemies rapidly with your centrifuge. Remember on your artifact run authorized mods arc so this mod only costs one energy. Ashes to asset whereby flashbang or pulse grenade kills will generate super energy and heavy ammo finder which is my personal preference. On your gloves I run one grenade kickstart to instantly gain back a chunk of grenade energy when you consume it. Firepower so our grenade kills generate orbs of power bolstering detonation whereby damaging enemies with your grenade grants class ability energy. The relevant resistance mods depending on the activity you're running on your chest piece. I then run two innovation mods and one absolution on my boots so we gain the maximum amount of grenade energy back when we pick up an orb of power. If you're struggling with survival then you can switch out one innovation mod with recuperation so you gain back chunks of health instead. Thanks to powerful attraction on your bond whenever you use your rift it will hoover up any near by orbs so you don't have to run around picking them up and it'll instantly give you a chunk of your grenade energy back. We then take this even further by running double bomber on top to really maximize our grenade energy returns when we use our rift. In terms of stat priority 100 resilience for the 30% damage resistance is the number one priority here especially if you're running harder content. In close second is getting as high discipline as possible to minimize grenade cooldown as consuming your grenade starts the entire chain of events and you want this up as quick as possible especially when you're not killing enemies as fast in harder activities like a GM. Then go for recovery in third you'll see I actually have a pretty low recovery myself with my armor and because of ionic traces I barely noticed the low recovery stat and I was still getting my rift pretty quickly. Then go for intellect, strength and mobility in that order. So there you have it, the best Warlock build this season, period. This is the most amount of lightning explosions, lightning chaining you can possibly generate along with great survivability and champion coverage. Heck, this exact build also works incredibly well in PvP as well. So what are you waiting for? Go try this out as soon as possible, you won't be disappointed. If you enjoyed what I talked about today, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more Destiny builds, both PvE and PvP. I'm Mr. Ronit, and that's it for today. Peace out, guys. Ooh.